super pumped up for example three. So, um, if you kind of get the gist of how to solve these properties of parallel problems, I highly encourage you to try this on your own. So go ahead and try it on your own and see if you get the right thing in the end. Otherwise, follow along. So, we have several things going on. We know that BC is 5x plus 19 and AD is 7x. So we know two side lengths of a parallelogram and we also have two angle measures. We know angle B is 6y plus 5 and angle A is 10y minus 1. So we need to kind of think about properties of side lengths and parallelograms as well as properties of angles and parallelograms. So why don't we start with the side lengths? So, I have two sides that are right across from each other. How do opposite sides of a parallelogram relate to each other, you guys? You guys are so smart, they are congruent. So this one is congruent to this one, okay? So when we solve for this one, we need to set these bad boys equal to each other because they are congruent. So let's start solving. So I know that 5x plus 19 should equal 7x. All right, so 7x equals 5x plus 19. All right, let's start solving this bad boy for x. So first, we need to bring our x's together because they're besties and they want to be together. Don't separate your besties, you guys. They're besties. They need to be together. Okay, so how? I'm going to bring the 5x over to meet the 7x. So how do we bring 5x to the other side? You guys are too cool for school. You do subtract that bad boy on both sides. Bam and bam. So 7x minus 5x is 2x, and 5x minus 5x cancels out and turns to 0. So I'm left with 2x equals 19. All right, and then how do we bring 2 to the other side? Got to get x by itself now. Hmm. Well, 2 is secretly multiplying to the x, so the way we bring it to the other side is by dividing that thing on both sides. So 2 divided by 2 cancels and turns to 1. 19 cannot be divided by 2, so x is simply 19 halves. Awesome. But now, guess what, you guys? We have to find the variables and the sides and angles containing the variables. So I need to solve for side BC and AD. Okay, so BC equals 5x plus 19, and AD equals 7x. So let's start solving. All right, so everywhere I spot an x, I'm going to substitute in 19 halves, which fractions are a friend, so this is going to be epic, you guys. It's going to be magical. Okay, let's get going. So we have 5 times x, which is 19 halves. Okay, which I'm going to put the 5 over 1, since we have fractions, plus 19. All right, and when we multiply fractions, guess what, you guys? We go straight on across. So 5 times 19, I'm going to do that on the side because I don't know that off the top of my head. So 15 times, or sorry, 19 times 5 is 94. Or no, whoops, Miss Long's having a moment. 95, sorry. So 95. So this is 95 in the numerator, and then 2 times 1 is 2. So it's 95 over 2 plus 19. But if you remember, in order to add fractions, we must have a common denominator. So I must make 19 be over 2 somehow. So it secretly is over 1. So what can I multiply 1 by to make it 2? Hmm. <gasps> you guys are so smart. It is 2. And if I multiply it to the denominator, i got to multiply it to the numerator. So I'm going to go straight across. So 19 times 2 gives me 38. And 1 times 2 gives me 2. So now I simply leave my denominator alone since I have a common denominator and I add my numerators. So 95 plus 38, I'm going to work it out because I do not know that off the top of my head. So 95 and 38, 8 and 5 is 13, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 133. Holy hot dog, you guys. So BC is 133 over 2. I'm going to write it right here. All right, and remember, you guys, since these are supposed to be congruent, I better get the same thing for this. So let's see what happens. So everywhere I spot an X, I'm going to substitute in 19 halves. So we have 7 times, there's secretly times, the X, which is 19 halves. 
So I'm going to write as 19 over 2. And since we're multiplying fractions, I'm going to put this over a 1. And guess what, you guys? We're going to go straight on across. Bam and bam. So 17 times 19, I don't know that off the top of my head, so I'm just going to work it out. I'll do it up here. So 19 times 7 is 133. Holy hot dog. I think we're getting the right answer. And 1 times 2 is 2. <gasps> Holy hot dog, you guys. We got the same thing. Yay, we did it correct. So AD equals 133 over 2. Holy hot dog, right? But guess what, you guys? We're not done. So we conquered the side lengths, but now we have to deal with the angle measures. Okay, so I'm going to kind of branch this off like so to make sure I have some space for the other side. Okay, so let's see here. We need to think about different angle properties in a parallelogram. Okay, which angle B and A, they're not opposite angles, which means they're not congruent. But let's see which shape these bad boys make when I trace them. So when I trace angle B... And when I trace angle A, <gasps> what shape is that, you guys? Holy hot dog! It makes the C shape, which means these are same side interior angles. And how do same side interior angles relate to each other? I don't even know why I asked you guys. You always know the answer. You're my brightest students ever. Okay, so they are supplementary. So same side interior angles are supplementary, which means they add up to be 180. So I'm going to add B to A, and they should add up to be 180. So let's see what happens. Okay, so angle B is 6Y plus 5. And angle A is 10Y minus 1. And guess what, you guys? They're supplementary, which means they have to be 180. All right, let's get going. So first, I'm going to be combining my like terms. So let's see what our like terms are. I spot two y's, so I'm going to combine those. 6y plus 10y gives me 16y. All right, and then I'm going to combine the numbers without the y's. So we have a 5 and a negative 1, which 5 minus 1 gives me a 4. Oh, man. So now I must get this y on one side by itself. So I must move the 4 to the other side. So the way we move 4 to the other side, since it's positive, I'm going to subtract that thing on both sides. 4 minus 4 cancels and turns to 0. 180 minus 4 gives me 176. All right, so now we have 16y equals 176. All right, and how do we move 16 to the other side? Hmm. Well, it secretly is multiplying to the y, so the way we move it to the other side is by dividing that thing on both sides, which 16 divided by 16 cancels and turns to 1, and 176 divided by 16, let's see if I can do it in my head, is 11. Yeah. So y is 11. Holy hot dog. Yay! But... We are not done. We also need to find angle B and angle A, which we don't have fractions, so this won't take this long. So let's solve for angle B, which is the measure of angle B is 6y plus 5, and the measure of angle A is 10y minus 1. Okay, so if we do this right, these two shouldn't be the same, but they should add up to be 180. So let's see what happens. All right, so everywhere I spot a Y, I'm going to replace it with an 11. Okay, so we have 6 times Y, which is 11. So we have the measure of angle B equals 6 times 11 plus the 5. 6 times 11 is 66. And 66 plus 5 will give me 71 degrees. Yay, so the measure of angle B is 71 degrees. All right, so if I do this correctly, this one, angle A, should add up to be 180, which means this one should be, let's see here, da, 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 70 from 180 is 110. It should be 109 if I do this correctly. So let's see if we get 109. I don't know. We'll have to see. Okay, so I'm going to substitute an 11 for the Y. So the measure of angle A equals 10 times the Y. Do you guys see it right there? Bam, which is 11 minus 1, which 10 times 11 is 110, 
And guess what, you guys? 110 minus 1 is 109. And 109 plus 71 is 180. So yay, we did it correctly. So we solved 4x for the lengths of each side, BC and AD. We solved for y and the measures of angle B and A. Pretty nifty, right? I hope you guys had the most fun you've ever had in your life, because I just did right there. So I hope you guys felt the same way. Nice job.